Sorry, I can't help you out. I'm sorry. Well, drop it! I'm oh, sorry, I can't help you out. Drop it! Hi guys, welcome to this classic battle between the Colt Detective Special, early to mid 70s, versus the Smith & Wesson 12, early to mid 60s. All right, these are both very lightweight. This is this is the steel, the Detective Special, 21 ounces. This is aluminum frame, 17 ounces, and yet they're both six shot revolvers. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this part one of the range session. If I can get more 38 ammo, hopefully there will be a part two. I am not a snub nose revolver shooter, so keep that in mind. But this is part of the range session, as it probably should be with 158 grain uh, semi wad cutters and Zeta strips to reload with. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Let's take a little look-see here of the Colt Detective Special, an icon of early movies. Look at that nice shine already. Just cleaned her up a couple times. And this aluminum frame, Smith & Wesson 12. Pretty hard to find as well. Didn't even know they made it because I don't want to lug around a 32 ounce, 34 ounce, uh, stubby two inch anyway, K-frame. But 17 ounces, I still think nowadays this is probably one of the very best backup pistols you could carry. Offside front pocket, offside in a cone front pocket. Six shots way better than five. This is obviously full size. I should be able to shoot well with it because the sights. This is just a little bit better, bigger than a J frame. Barely, barely. And yet you get those six shots. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, because of limited ammo, I'm going to take just a single shot, first shot, single action, then we're going to do DA from the Smith & Wesson. And um, it would probably fit my, my hand better if I get a Tyler T-grip on it. Hopefully I can get that to evaluate things uh, fairly. Remember, the Smith is bigger, has better sights, especially since uh, the cold is nickel. And the front sights have not been painted yet. That might get rectified. All right, dead center, it looked like a little high, so maybe that's just me needing to dip it, but dead center. Yeah, <laughs> with the Colt, the sight's not painted, so I may hit high with it. All right, let's see how I did. Um, the Smith & Wesson, just a little high. Again, guys, I'm not used to shooting snub sights. So that is on me. And I miss with the Colt, unless I, we find out otherwise, that is for sure probably on me as well. Both high for me. Need to really evaluate the way I would need to put brighter ones on the front side so I know if I'm uh, pointing it high a bit naturally. So we'll find out. Let's try one more shot single action with the Colt. And guys, Colts go clockwise. Smith & Wesson's Rugers go counterclockwise. Keep that in mind when you only loaded one round. Is not painted. Let's see. Okay, a little lower. The eye line was right. Elevation was right, but still left. Reloading with the Zeta 6 uh, clip. You put it in, and you rip it out, and there we go. Okay, guys, please keep in mind I'm not a stubby shooter, and we're going from seven yards now with the Smith & Wesson, just slow fire, but I may be all over the place. Okay, here we go. Let's see how I did. All right, well, I say this old Smith is still mechanically very accurate, sitting at a three right here, two touching there, and one there, and they're all pretty uh, linear. So that's just me learning where to put the front post. I, got, I, I seem to want to shoot both of these a little high naturally, but that's very good and something I would get used to. And I'd much rather shoot someone high in the spine and the throat 
and low in the stomach where it doesn't necessarily stop their deadly actions at all or like for 55 seconds. Okay, Zeta 6K clip, you get it in. I'm having a little bit of difficulty just because it grips and releases and you whip it off, but I'm sure that takes practice and these are just breaking in. All right. All right, let's see how the cold does. Seven yards, double action, slow fire. Got a smoke screen so my attacker can't get me. All six A zone, all six A zone. So when you do my part, it both either one will do their part. Say to six K clip, K pack. All six or five for your J frames or, or even LCRs to make a separate one or three by three. I have a separate video on some of these. And uh you can also keep them together like this in your back pocket. I wouldn't carry lead, but I had them in plastic today to carry in the car on the way here just to make sure this was all good. This is what I would carry in my back pocket. If I was carrying a coat, I'd probably have two of these. So let's see how that works. Smash your ejector. Yes, hit your ejector. Contrary to some weirdos. Go here, rip them off. And obviously I'm not snubby as, you know, experienced as Paul Harrell, but there we go. All right, now moderate speed with the Smith & Wesson, five yards, uh, going from excellent Don Hume holster, but it's for GP100, so the K-frames doesn't fit it. But I'm just going to go and draw slow, and we'll do a little faster. We're unlimited ammo, guys. Okay, let's see how I did. Okay, four out of six, pretty good. One, two, a box, that basically a box, a little high, right in the throat. One bad, that wouldn't have done much unless it happened to hit that brachial um, artery that comes up from the arm. So, not bad, not an expert, and the grips on the Smith are slim for me. I think I would do far better, number one, with um, uh, Tyler T grip on it hopefully we can do that in a round two in the future and also guys if the front there was washing out black on the gray the front sight was washed out if i had it painted bright orange i think it would have been cleaned up quite a bit better one further. there we go let's do the three by three k pack zeta strip in the cold see how that works out Not bad. So I would get both and time yourself and figure out carry methods. I would get both the products and check the, the grips and how everything interacts. All right, now the Colt Detective Special 5 yards. And shorter but thick grip for my, bigger, my big hands. Feels pretty good. We'll see how the hits work. All right, here's our hits. I think I was naturally quicker because it fits my hand a little bit better. Again, the Smith grip's thinner. I have uh, XL gloves. It's very similar head-to-head. -head. Both these revolvers are doing my part, their part. I got to do a little bit better my part. But first time with them, I think they would serve you very well. All right, guys, so old, old revolvers, still old reliable, right? So now bad breath, three yards distance. Now we'll figure out what we're going to do with the uh, Smith & Wesson now excuse the noise and um wanted to say so i talked about the tyler t grip i'll see if you know he can maybe give me one out uh that i think would help me out to evaluate it a little more real hopefully we can find more rounds and do more in the future uh also real pocket holster and offside which is what i would carry these as a backup i still think a six shot lightweight snubby is a wonderful 
backup slash work weapon. So in a non-permissive environment, I say carry in your offside front pocket. Muscle memory goes there. As soon as you leave, or maybe if you have a lockbox, or you should get one in your vehicle, you put on something bigger, primary side, and you always have a weapon available in both hands, and something to hand to someone else if need be, and things of that nature. But for up close you can be, the revolver has a lot of great advantages, especially if you're in a car fight, if you're a driver with your offhand having to turn around, if you're a driver, something I just kind of occurred to me, um, as well as any integral gunfight. Okay, so, oh, I also wanted to say a real pocket holster, of course, would help, and hopefully next time we will be able to evaluate the wonderful holsters from LAPD veteran Robert Mika of Mika Pocket Holsters. Go to Mika Pocket Holsters. Hopefully we'll get something that is beautiful and fast and perfect enough for these things again a day. We're working with not exactly ideal holsters. Uh, right now, down here, one of them, but it, I guess it's in the bigger GP100 right now, and the grip's a little thin for me. All right. I did really well. Well, considering my draw and the grip was bad and I had to readjust, five right there, upper thoracic, heart, spine, lungs, uh, right there, and one in the artery perfectly. Whoo, that even make them bleed out faster. So, even with a bad grip, revolver up close and personal, we are more likely to need it, really, guys. Five yards and in, seven yards and in. Look at the 62 GGU by Tom Gibbons. Okay, guys, now left hand with the Smith. Left hand offside for me. I'm right-handed. Pocket carry. Unfortunately, I uh, don't have a great Mika pocket holster yet. Hopefully next time, if we can find more ammo. But, three yards. I need to check it because for me, this would most likely be a backup or possibly summer carrying two lightweight revolvers if that's the way I decided to go when I get older or whatever. But even now, I'm thinking, man, I, a six-shot lightweight revolver would really make a great uh, backup gun okay so again draw might not be great whatever i'm gonna do two shots let's do two shots both handed we'll see how it goes yeah i don't like trouble man i don't like trouble man Back up! okay let's see what i did it rocked a bit because of the thin grips again well, I'd say putting two on top of each other in the lung, uh, right there, I would say that that would be pretty effective. All right, let's try two shots one-handed with the Smith. Hey, dude, man, I, I can't help you out. I'm sorry. I won't do it! And one good and one not so good. Maybe I'd get lucky, broken collarbone. That is not very acceptable to me. But again, I'm just kind of checking these out. Both have, the Smith & Wesson has a very good trigger. Great trigger. Colt Detective Special, offhand, two-handed, two shots. Hey, dude, man, hey, back off, dude. Hey, man, I don't got any problem. I don't got any problem. No, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Back up! And with the two-handed grip, even my offside, we see two right on top of each other pretty much in the lungs. All right, let's finish up with three shots, one-handed, three yards. I tend to overswing, something I need to work on with the revolvers. Hey, man, uh, back off, dude. Uh, sorry, I can't help you out. Drop it! Sorry, dude. Now, with the coal, probably because of the bigger grip, the thicker grip, it's not as shorter, but it's thicker. With the coal, I was able to keep in there, all there, even with even with one-handed. So, you know, a six-shot lightweight backup carry revolver, could it be right for you? Especially old ones, excellent triggers on a Colt or a Smith & Wesson, that's what's up. Excellent trigger is gonna be hard to find nowadays. Uh, I reckon it kind of similar to an 856 Ultralight Taurus maybe, that's something you could pick up. I've looked at them. Um, and they seem pretty good. The triggers are pretty good. So, but old classics, guys, old classics probably aren't going to let you down. We just saw that. Did really well, and I'm not a snubby shooter. I think the Colt, and I think that the Smith & Wesson, 12, the Colt Detective Special, possibly even a Colt Agent or a Colt Cobra, I think they have great triggers, and that makes you able to cover your butt.
Please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Smash that subscription and thumbs up. Thank you. Guys, so both these beauties performed flawlessly. Take a look-see. Mid-70s Colt Detective Special. 17 ounces, but bigger. 21 ounces, but smaller. Really, almost a J-frame. 0.008 or something thicker. It's not as thick as you think to get that six shot. So this is really a K-frame, but it happens to be lightweight. Nice sight picture there. Now nickel, this sight picture is a little narrow and needs both need to be a painted front sight. But this will clean up after all these rounds. It needs to be shot, but look at that shine. Hello. An old reliable here. I mean, some famous writers and gunfighters wrote about this. Jim Cirillo carry this as a backup. I think that you'll be very well served with something like either of these should you be lucky enough to find one in good shape. And I think you will enjoy it a lot. Both have phenomenal triggers. Nice breaks. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Thanks. Enjoy, everybody.